Good evening. We will be conducting tonight's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom to allow city council staff and public to social distance. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting tonight on WAVE channel 18 and online through the city's YouTube channel. If you would like to participate in live public comment via Zoom platform, please refer to the agenda for instructions. Pastor Eric Long will be doing the invocation and the mayor will begin the meeting immediately after. Pastor, if you'd like to please begin. Yes, thank you. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful and so humbled to serve, serve in this community, serve the city of Lincoln. And we ask for your wisdom. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your favor. All the challenges ahead of us, not just uh, today, but in this, this coming year, Lord, may you bless us with uh, courage to do all that you've called us to do, the wisdom to be able to see that we, what we need to do and how, how to implement all these uh, challenges ahead of us. Lord, we are so thankful. We are humbled again and blessed to be your servants in this great and beautiful city of Lincoln. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Long. Really appreciate you being here. Thank and you. I look forward to having you back in April when we can be in person. So me too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Amen. a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Awesome. Have a good evening. All right. It's six o'clock. Um, so welcome to the February 8th, 2022 regular meeting city of Lincoln city council redevelopment successor agency, public finance authority. And so at uh, six o'clock, I call this meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Scanlon, can we have the roll call please? Yes, Mayor. Council Member Joyner? Here. Council Member Carl Skint? Here. Council Member Lauritsen? Here. Council Member Silhai? You did. I saw her here, joining. Sorry, I tried. Here Thank you. And Mayor Andreata? I'm here. Thank you. All right. Item number three report from closed session. Um, City Attorney will report on our closed session meeting this evening. Thank you, Mayor Andreata. Uh, the City Council met in closed session with uh, relevant staff, and although we were given direction, there is no reportable action. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Number uh, Item number four, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, so first of all, I want to welcome our new City Manager, Sean Scully. Uh, I feel really bad that our, our first official meeting with him is on Zoom, um, but I've asked him to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, um, and I appreciate him doing that. So go ahead, Sean. Sure, happy to. Just let me adjust my camera here so I can stand and not look weird. Okay. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you so much. All right, um, item number five, agenda modifications. Do we have any agenda modifications this evening? Our agenda is so light, I don't, I see, don't see what we could actually modify, but I thought I'd ask. Anybody? No. Okay, all right, seeing none. Uh, item number six, presentations. We do not have any tonight, um, but we will have two really important uh, modif uh, presentations next week or on the 22nd. So I'm looking forward to that. Item number seven, public comment. Um, so this is where um, the public has an opportunity to comment on non-agendized items. Uh, Ms. Scanlon, do we have any public comment? Uh, yes, Mayor, I do have a hand raised. Byron Chapman, please go ahead. Can you hear me, Gwen? Yes. Hello? Yep, go ahead, Mr. Chapman, we can hear you just fine. All right, thank you. Uh, again, Byron Chapman, 12 Bridges area. Uh, Madam Mayor, Council members, city staff. Um, uh, Mayor, I, I really want to uh, highlight, I guess, maybe a, a few changes, but they mean a great deal to us in the public. Uh, at your very first meeting as mayor, uh, and those of us who are familiar with the procedures of the council meetings, uh, recognize that on non-agendized items, the council or the mayor or staff uh, it's not required to uh, answer uh, any of our comments, questions, or concerns. Uh, however, on that very first meeting, and you've done it since then, uh, several of us, I think it was three or four, had questions and or comments. And it was 
incredibly refreshing to have you address those. Uh, I recognize that there are certain questions and items that uh, research has to take place. Uh, it, it has to be uh, discussed uh, by all of the council members at once uh, via the packets. But this particular item uh, has gone for years as somewhat of a, whoever was in charge could have had the questions answered uh, and chose not to. However, you're not in that uh, particular arena. Uh, you've gone out of your way in order to uh, re recognizing that the answer is very simple. Uh, it's not uh, anything in length. Uh, it's no uh, classified whatever it may be. And I have to tell you, I've talked to several people, uh, quite a few actually, all of them totally, completely agree that you've demonstrated in that, that position that you provide the city's government's rules and passion for the citizens. That's why we engage in what we do. No, we don't always disagree uh, and we don't always agree. So all of the things that take place here, uh, any, any gesture whatsoever that help things move along quicker, provide information faster. And oftentimes it is as simple as uh, someone having the answer and uh, it, it, it's, it's given. So for that, uh, on behalf of many of those who I've spoken to, uh, thank you for doing for what you can, uh, rather than choosing not to do it even when you can. And I and others truly appreciate that. Uh, you're doing a fantastic job. And uh, thank you so very much for uh, changing the agenda a little bit in the way in which it's handled. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. That's very thoughtful of you to say. I appreciate those kind words. Thank you. All right, Ms. Scanlon, any other comments? Uh, no, Mayor, no other hands are raised. Okay. All right, um, then we will move on to item number eight, the consent agenda. All matters on the consent agenda are considered routine business and we will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the city council or resident requests a specific item be removed from the consent agenda for separate action. Any items removed will be considered after the remainder of the consent agenda. So uh, do any members of the council wish to pull an item from the consent agenda tonight? Madam Mayor, item 8D, please. 8D, okay. And then I don't know if I need it pulled. I mostly would just like a, like an explanation or report out for the public on 8H because it mentions Zoom. And I know that I constantly get a lot of residents who are very anxious about, are we keeping it? You know, what does that mean? And so just explaining what we're spending money on would be great. Great. Awesome. I don't know if that means that we need to like take a separate vote on it or if um, Ms. Scanlon could just give like a quick report on it. I don't know. Um, how yeah, you know what, we'll just go ahead and pull that and then we'll have her give a report and then we'll vote right. separately on it. Okay, any other council members? Okay, all right. Ms. Scanlon, do we have anybody from the public that would like to pull a, an item? No, Mayor, no hands are raised. Okay, uh, then can I have a motion to um, approve the rest of the consent agenda? Move approval of the remainder of the consent agenda. Second. Okay, so uh, uh, motion by Mayor Pro Tem Joyner and second by Council Member Silhai. Can we have roll call? Yes, thank you. Council Member Joyner? Yes. Council Member Silhai? Yes. Council Member Carlskin? Yes. Council Member Lauritsen? Yes. And Mayor Andriata? Yes. Okay, so item 8D, this is um, adopt a resolution 2022-27, authorizing the city manager or designee to submit an application to the Department of California Highway Patrol Cannabis Tax Fund Grant Program to fund two police traffic vehicles and obtain all equipment necessary to conduct safe and effective traffic enforcement with the goal of reducing and combating traffic related incidents, injuries and deaths related to driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs to include cannabis. And um, if we have Chief Alves available to give a report or Council Member Joyner, did you have a specific question or would you just like a, a rundown? You know what, I, I, I don't really, it, we have such a short agenda. This one just popped out to me. We all work so very hard to come up with creative solutions to be able to provide a higher level of service. And I think this one was, was really creative mm -hmm. on Chief Alves' part. Um, so I just thought I'd give him the opportunity to talk about it a little bit. And 
also to flesh out when we say traffic vehicles, are we talking about motor officers? Are we talking about uh, patrol vehicles? What are we talking about? Okay, good. Uh, Chief Alves, are you available? You're muted. Uh, oh, he's not there. You, no, he's there. You go. You look like you're you're ready now. No, you're still muted. Uh, Veronica, can you help the chief? <laughs> he's trying. Okay, he's gonna troubleshoot. All right, sorry about that. Awesome, you thank you. Messing with my uh, my other monitor, so yeah, thank you. Um, so I'll uh, give a brief overview of this grant. So this grant, um, you will remember, it, it uh, recently we requested approval to submit for a similar grant uh, through the Office of Traffic Safety. Uh, this grant, it, it's along, it's in the same vein. Um, the administering authority in this one is under the California Highway Patrol. Um, Proposition 64, uh, when that was approved by Californians, um, the control, regulate, and tax adult use of marijuana, the uh, voters within that mandate um, stated that the state needs to set aside funds for uh, local governments and qualified nonprofits to um, enforce driving under the influence and uh, public education and outreach. So there's $12 million this year uh, that the CHP is administering to small and medium uh, law enforcement agencies for this purpose. And in this grant, um, it's fairly wide open, but again, the, the main goals are to uh, for enforcement and for public education. And what we're requesting is um, $150,000 for um, two vehicles, associated equipment, and um, you can also use these funds for overtime and staffing to conduct uh, checkpoints or saturation patrols uh, throughout the year. It's a reimbursable grant, does not require any matching funds. Um, it, we're not able to use it to supplant any existing funds, and this would not do that. So the uh, intent and what we would like to uh, pursue on this would be two vehicles. Um, stated vehicles, uh, that's a bit up in the air as to whether we would be looking for um, uh, motorcycles or uh, actual patrol vehicles, you know, the four-door type. Uh, we have to submit this grant by the end of this month, so we will likely probably do one motorcycle and one uh, regular vehicle. Uh, again, this is very similar to the last grant, but we're certainly not going to put all our eggs in one basket, and um, this is a bit repetitive, but... Um, the grant process is quite competitive and hopefully we can get one of these two grants. And um, <clears throat> like, again, it's a one-year grant and it, it's just a pretty typical state grant. And uh, we report back to them with our, with our results as we go. And um, they anticipate announcing awards around May or June of this year. So uh, funding could be coming fairly quickly off of this grant. All right. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, no questions from me, Chief. I'm, I'm going to support this tonight. I just uh, really just thought it was um, something worth, given our, our availability of time, just letting the public know uh, you're working on. Absolutely. Good. All right. Thank you, Chief. Do the council, Dan, go ahead. Um, I, I have a question. I also will support this. I think it's a good idea. Um, do, do motorcycle policemen require a certain certification? Uh, yes, there's, a, I believe it's a, it's at least an 80 hour course. It's been a little while since I've looked into it. Okay. Uh, so you do need an M1 license and then you go through a specific class uh, to be certified. Okay, and this will fund that also? And this will fund training. Uh, that might be a bit of a creative use, but uh, we're certainly willing to try. Okay, thank you, that's all. All right. Any other council members have questions or comments? I do. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, Ms. Scanlon, are there any? I said uh, I did. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. I apologize. I thought I heard not didn't. Go ahead, oh. sir. No, I, I just had one one question. I know we have a field sobriety test for, for alcohol. Have they ever come up with one for uh, cannabis? 
So actual field sobriety test is a fairly universal um, uh, set of tests that we conduct. That's the, the finger to nose, walk the line. So all of those tests apply for both alcohol and marijuana. I don't know if you're referring specifically to the actual devices. Uh, there is an alcohol, yeah, there's an alcohol device that'll measure your blood alcohol content. There are some marijuana um, machines out there, but they're not generally accepted yet. Typically, uh, NHTSA, the National Highway and Transportation, needs to establish um, a, a acceptable level of what uh, level of intoxicants in your system to be considered impaired. And that hasn't been done yet since marijuana is still federally illegal. Mm -hmm. So uh, until California can establish a parts per million or whatever uh, percentage they can come up with, the, the tests are out there, but they're fairly random and they're not a hard, fast line in court as of this point. Okay, thanks. That's a good question. Council Member Lordson. Okay, so I don't step on anybody else. Any other council questions or comments? Okay, do we have any public comment on this, Ms. Scanlon? Yes, Mayor, we do have a hand raised. Byron Chapman, please go ahead. I'm always uh, trying to make sure you un unheard. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, just one question. Uh, I did read the packet and also the comment made uh, also regarding ideas on education. Um, does the city or the uh, uh, police department have um, any type of ideas or, and I'm a firm believer in not reinventing the wheel, uh, if, if ever possible to uh, certainly talk to other agencies, other locations that do this and try to find a one, two, three, four types of educational uh, uh, ideas uh, that certainly could uh, help on the prevention end of it, as well as uh, uh, what it sounds like here is also unfortunately dealing with those who do break the law. So I was just wondering what types of ideas and or education uh, could be combined in order to make this pro uh, progress a little bit better. Thank you. Chief, would you like to, can you respond to that? Absolutely. Quickly or, okay. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, so it is absolutely, um, it's a matter of our standard practice that if we're going to launch a new program or get into something new, the first thing we do is see what everybody else is doing. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel. Um, we like to see what others are doing and then see how we can make that work within the city of Lincoln and within our resources. So if there's something that's working great in a neighboring agency, we're going to piggyback along and we have an excellent relationship with all the agencies and they have never told us no as far as sharing any of their resources because we do the same to them. So uh, that is job one is what we would do uh, for the education. Uh, the next one, our main focus would be mainly that the school age, high school, um, with our school resource officers and our tobacco grant, we'd be able to implement um, driving under the influence awareness uh, to the schools. And then we can, you know, the, the sky's the limit. Well, the, the checkbook's the limit as far as the grant goes, but, um, you know, more widespread, we can uh, you know, get space on uh, the, uh, the video billboards or we can put up our own advertising. Um, there's a lot of different options and we will entertain all of them. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, Ms. Scanlon, any other hands raised? Um, no, public? Mayor, no other hands are raised. Okay. All right. We'll bring it back to the council. And if and nobody has any other further comments or questions, could I have a motion on this, please? I will go ahead and make the motion, but be forewarned, whoever wrote this, Matt, might have been you. This is one long run-on sentence, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> Adopt resolution 2022-27, authorizing the city manager or designee to submit an application to the Department of California Highway Patrol Cannabis Tax Fund grant program to fund two police traffic vehicles and obtain all equipment necessary to conduct safe and effective traffic enforcement with the goal of reducing and combating traffic-related incidents, injuries, and deaths related to driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs to include cannabis. You want to repeat? No, I don't. <laughs> so, I actually read that already, Paul. So I don't know if you had to read that, but that was a really uh, good job. So we have bad. a first first and a second roll call, please, Ms. Scanlon. Yes, Mayor. I'm sorry. I didn't hear who the second oh, was. Uh, oh. Council Member Carlos Gant. Thank you. Oh. Council Member Joyner. 
Yes. Council Member Carl Skin. Yeah. Council Member Lauritsen. Yes. Council Member Silhai. Yes. And Mayor Andriata. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. Item 8H. Adopt resolution 2022-31, authorizing the city manager to execute contract amendment number one in the amount of $26,830 for a total not to exceed contract amount of $41,055 with matrix audio visual for additional audio visual programming to resolve council chamber audio issues and fully integrate Zoom into council meetings. Very excited about this item. Um, <laughs> Council member so high did did you just want to hear a report on this or did you have a specific question ahead of time no I don't really have a question I just thought that it might be uh, useful for anyone who might come back to the recording to hear what we're investing in and to make sure that they realize we're not getting rid of zoom and and what it's yeah. all about yeah thank you okay Miss Scanlon would you like to give us a report on this Yes, thank you. Sorry, I don't have a video working right now, okay. so I'll just do an audio. Um, as council will recall, in 2019, we upgraded the audiovisual equipment in the council chambers. Mm -hmm. um, during the installation of that system, we did lose the engineer, um, and so they installed a fairly complex audiovisual system. And since that time, we've been using outside audiovisual consultant to stream the council and planning commission meetings. Um, since COVID-19, uh, city staff and the AV consultant have incorporated Zoom into the meetings. Um, and as COVID-19 restrictions eased up, the city continued to use Zoom in a hybrid meeting, which we intend to continue. Um, however, the hybrid approach has caused some fairly significant audio issues in the council chambers, which are disruptive to the council meetings. Um, city staff did meet uh, with the subject matter expert uh, matrix audio visual during uh, an information technology conference and staff followed up with this subject matter matter expert um, and entered into a contract which was within the city manager's signing authority. However, during their project discovery, they did um, find some programming issues that will need to be resolved. Um, as well as some issues with the stereo system. So um, this contract is to allow that consultant to um, resolve those audio issues with some uh, additional required programming and some um, additional work on the stereo system. So with that, I am happy to answer any council member questions, but yes, the intent is to continue the Zoom functionality. Great, thank you, Ms. Gellin. Mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate that because I know a lot of our residents are, um, I mean, Zoom has become convenient for a lot of people. I mean, I'm anxious for us to come back in person, but it really gives a lot more uh, ability for people who can't make it in person to participate. And so I really appreciate the effort going into this. Um, do council members have any questions or comments on this item? All I'll say is thank you for the, yeah. the report out and for making it easier for everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. And I am being playful about this, but if we are actually still using a stereo system, <laughs> then that may be the source of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, council member Lordson or Carl Skint, any questions or comments? Uh, I have my comment is that I discussed this with Gwen several times. Actually, what um, we, we'll get at the end of this with these with Matrix with these uh, this company, we'll get the total system that we bought in 2018, which was never completely implemented correctly because the chief engineer left in the at the start of the project so i'm ecstatic in that we bought a really good system then and we finally should see it work to its fullest intent uh today or in a week so, so that may have created a question for me madam mayor if i may yeah go um, ahead. So, so dan at the end of this i mean is this essentially going to be a programming fix, so we're just going to hear the echo go away, or are we going to physically see a difference in the system? 
There will be a little bit of a difference. We are adding a uh, an additional TV monitor um, to the back of the podium, so council can look straight on to Zoom, and mm -hmm. also get rid of the echoing. And I will say too that um, the consultant did say that all of our equipment is very good equipment that we can continue to use even if we move to a new council chambers on the first floor. We can reutilize all of that. Good. And, and how big will that monitor on the podium uh, be? It's then? 65 inches, which right. is about the biggest that we could get for that space. Yeah. Up, up at PCTPA, they've got that set up, but it's only about a 24 inch and you you know, from the 15 feet away you are, you can't see a thing. Yeah, no, this hopefully will be fine. Great, that's great, awesome. We do have a hand raise, Mayor, Mr. Yeah. Chapman, please go, go ahead. ahead. Mr. Chapman, if you could unmute yourself. How about Mr. now? Chap can yes, we now? can hear you now, yes. Thank you, Gwen. Uh, Byron Chapman, again. Uh, for those of us who uh, had the opportunity to be in the council chambers uh, during the short stint that we were able to do so, um, uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree, uh, certainly with uh, the council and everyone else that happened to be in the council chambers uh, during those meetings. I mean, um, money well spent as far as I can tell, because the echoes uh, in the chamber if, uh, those of you that were not there were absolutely, um, let's just say you could hardly hear back to back what was being said. The echo was literally made it extremely difficult to even hear, let alone talk. So uh, I appreciate the, uh, the staff uh, finally getting a handle on that because uh, it wasn't just the annoyance. It was that honestly could not hear three quarters of the meeting and uh, it, it, it made it very difficult to follow. So thank you very much. Uh, greatly appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. We, we share we share in that agony. So we're very grateful to staff for just continuing to work through work through the issues. Um, this whole uh, Zoom echo thing is is an issue for everybody. So thank you very much. Any other hands raised? No, um, Mayor. OK. All right. Uh, if there's no other questions or comment from the council, can I have a, a motion? And I, I already read it, so I, I don't think we need to do it again unless you just really want to. I'll go ahead and make the motion, but one last question. When can we expect the project to be complete? Uh, they are working this week. And so hopefully the next regular council meeting on the 22nd, we will have everything resolved. Fingers Very crossed. Good. That's great. Thank you. Absolutely. Both fingers crossed. <laughs> motion is made. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so motion by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Joyner and second by Councilmember Carlos Skint. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Yes. Councilmember Joyner? Yes. Councilmember Carl Skint? Yes. Councilmember Lauritsen? Yes. Councilmember Silhai? Yes. And Mayor Andriata? Yes. Okay, thanks everybody. That um, concludes the consent agenda. Item number nine, public hearings. We don't have any tonight. And so that brings us to item number 10 general business, um, 10A, uh, number one, council discussion regarding making the necessary continued findings under AB 361 to continue with public meetings in a virtual setting due to the spread and risks rel relative to Omicron variant of COVID-19, and if so desired, number two, adopt resolution 2022-32, making findings consistent with the requirements of AB 361 to allow for continued video conference conferencing of public meetings. So uh, Ms. Molenkoff is going to give us an update on this item. Thank you, Council. I, I will be relatively brief. I will not go over the legislative history of AB 361 as you've heard me recite it to you, I think uh, four times already. So I think you're all very well familiar with uh, the requirements of AB 361 and what we're here to talk about. Um, in, on January 10th, this council met an emergency session based on the numbers that we were seeing in the county and also the numbers that we were seeing out of our biobot in our wastewater treatment plant and made the findings in order to allow the city council to meet remotely due to the risk of extreme peril to the community if we were to meet in person. The purpose of tonight is under AB 361, once a council makes those findings, it has to readdress them every 30 days to make a determination as to whether that imminent risk to the public health still exists 
or not. And if not, then you are no longer allowed to invoke the uh, sort of escape clause uh, with respect to video conferencing that AB 361 provides and would instead return to the traditional provisions of the Brown Act that require for uh, make requirements for how you notice and um, set up meetings when members of the council want to attend remotely. So the purpose of the involvement tonight is to kind of give you a quick update on some of the numbers that we're seeing in the county. Our staff reports get submitted through our internal review process about two weeks before the actual council meeting. So I did not want to include a lot of information in my staff report about what numbers looked like two weeks ago because I did not feel that that would be relevant to tonight's discussion. Um, the county has updated its uh, charts on its webpage, actually effective yesterday, and we also have some very recent biobot data that is coming out of our wastewater treatment plant. So I wanted to just generically share with you some of that information and then turn it over to council for further and more robust discussion. Um, we did recently learn that the governor has stated that he is going to allow the mask mandate to expire. That is going to be on February 15th. So that's Tuesday, a week from today. Um, so there will be no more mandatory mask requirements in the state of California for the governor's office. If you look at our biobot data, this was a sample that was collected on February 1st. And so for the public who's not familiar, the city owns and operates a wastewater treatment facility, and we have throughout the entire COVID pandemic been monitoring the, the fecal matter that comes through our system and evaluating it for numbers related and projecting and prognosticating what that looks like for COVID based in our community. So the numbers uh, in our most recent report that is dated recently is a collection date of February 1st are dramatically improved over the results that you saw when you met on January 10th. Uh, the uh, virus concentration on January uh, 10th when you reviewed it was over 7 million, 7.1 million. And in the most recent study, it was dramatically lower at 1.8 million. With a normalized finding currently of under a million, it's 970,000 where the normalized finding back in January 7th of 2022 was over 3.6 million. So that is a dramatic re reduction in those numbers. Um, although we continue to have a higher concentration level than quantifiable samples that have been taken by this company in the last six weeks, we reduce that percentage to 35%. So we're only 35% above those normalized findings, whereas in early January, we were 79% above those normalized findings. So that is a significant reduction. Um, with respect to uh, the county's health and human services numbers, I think some of the most important numbers really to look, like, look at that I know council members have commented to me on are available beds in both our hospitals and in ICU. And the number of beds have increased since we last looked at that. And we currently have 39 beds available in amongst Placer County's three hospitals. Um, and it looks like uh, 15 available ICU beds. So that is also improved over the findings that uh, we had back in January. And so with that, um, according to the dashboard it, with the Placer County Health and Human Services Department, our seven day average is declining. Um, so over the last seven days, we have shown a relatively dramatic decline in cases and that is in both the vaccinated and unvaccinated populations. And so with that, I have informally provided links to council members so that they could review the information on the county's webpage. Um, any member of the public that wishes to go to placer.ca.gov, uh, they can look at the dashboard and see that information for themselves as well. Um, and so I would turn it over to the council at this point for further discussion. Before you this evening is, are a couple of opportunities. First, there is a resolution, proposed resolution that would uh, basically indicate that the council finds that there continues to be an imminent risk to the public that necessitates meeting remotely under AB 361. If the council does not feel comfortable making those findings, then there is no action necessary on this resolution. Um, one third option that became apparent to me 
recently in conversations with Ms. Scanlon is that we do have a couple of committee meetings that are scheduled over the next week um, that our notices had to go out and they have been scheduled remotely because we have been operating under these AB 361 findings. So one way, if you, rather than us having to cancel those meetings, um, if the council wished to uh, revise the resolution under item, let's see, it would be now therefore be it resolved section 2A, you could find that a state of emergency related to COVID-19 remains in effect through perhaps February 15th when the mask mandate lifts and you could specify that it was as to the committees and commissions only. Um, and so that, that is a, a third option that is available to you as is giving staff additional direction. So with that, I will conclude my report unless there are any questions and then leave it up to council for discussion. Okay, thank you, Ms. Malikoff, I appreciate that. Um, let's go to the council, Mayor Pro Tem Joyner. I think I'd offer up a 3A, if you will. Um, if we're working on putting together a workshop for the 14th, mm -hmm. why don't we go ahead and take a look at the numbers at that point and take action on this there? I think it does effectively the same thing that you've offered up, Christine, but it also gives us one more chance to review those numbers. Or, or would they change in that one week time? Would we be able to see another reading? We probably would not receive another biobot. Um, I don't know what the county's reporting deadlines are, um, but certainly a, another option would be for the county to sim or for the county for this council to simply continue this item to a date certain, um, which I think we're looking at either February fourteenth or fifteenth for a workshop on the ARPA funds, and we could simply add it to that agenda. I'm inclined to go that way. Yeah. Uh, the other question to Gwen is, what are the dates of the scheduled, already scheduled meetings? So we have scheduled a EDC tomorrow, which was scheduled as a Zoom entire meet, entirely meeting. Um, we do have possibly a works council work session on Monday, as we've been discussing, we're still trying to finalize that date. And then the next um, planning commission meeting is on February 16th, which would be after that February 15th date Christine is talking about. Right. So I just, I have to say, I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with the idea of us extending these provisions for convenience because we noticed something like the entire point of it is do we have an emergency or do we not it should be completely separate from wh what's convenient to what we've already been doing like i'm un i'm uncomfortable with the conversation right now i gotta be honest so we're still sitting at 35 percent above normal correct wasn't that your number christine that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Aren't we sitting at still sitting at 35% above the normal or the average, the baseline? Of, I the, guess? of the average collected over the last six weeks, correct. So there is still a rise in virus, although it's coming down. The question becomes what level of increase are we comfortable with before going back into meetings? Well, what I heard was there is a drastic decrease. So... I mean, it, it's still it so, elevated. High, though, so it doesn't mean that we're out of it. Um, I think that Paul's right. The question is, at what point are we wanting to pull the trigger? That's a conversation that I am comfortable having, having it. Oh, well, how do we justify because we already have something noticed? And I don't think we actually can do it just for our commissions and boards. I, we would have to be under it also. So either we re meet remotely mm -hmm. for our working group or we don't. And it's because there's issues or there's not. We, we don't have to even address this till the what is it, second of March, whatever, 30 days from when we put it in place. Correct. So convenience is Co not correct. Not an issue. The, the council could adopt this resolution and then we could do what we have been doing. And that is at every, basically I've done a staff report at each and every council meeting and the council has been provided the opportunity to uh, lift the resolution or proceed 
with the findings under the resolution? Well, I, I, I might be okay with uh, continuing this conversation to our workshop, whether it's the 14th or 15th. Um, but I honestly do not want to do another council meeting on Zoom. We've already pushed back proclamations and things that we promised people. And, and by that time, the numbers should be even further. So my personal feeling is I don't want to do another council meeting on Zoom. People are wanting us to come back in person. So if, if we want to talk about talking about this at our workshop, we can do that. Um, but that's, that's my thought. Um, Councilmember Lordson, do you have any comments or questions about this? Yeah, I prefer to go to in person uh, myself. I mean, several governors are lifting the uh, mass requirements, and you know, mm -hmm. I think the uh, the incidence of um, uh, is down. So, you know, I think we could go to uh, you know in person next next meeting. And we're still offering Zoom for people who can't yeah. come in person. So, exactly. I think that's a really great solution for the for the public. For the public. Yes, for the yes. public. Yeah. Yeah, for the public. Yeah, Zoom isn't it? Uh... I know, I know that. I meant for the public. Okay. Yeah, I meant for the public. Yes. All right. Let's um. Let's let's see if there's any hand raise in uh, for public comment, and then we'll come back to the council. Yes, Mayor, we do have a hand raise. Byron Chapman, please go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I too think that uh, one of the issues truly is. What is the magic number? Um, is it a combination of the facilities at the hospitals uh, available and down? If it could be determined as to what down to represents, whether that's 15%, 20%. I think by doing that, obviously, uh, if the governor uh, passes a mandate, then we have to follow that. But uh, as of we stand here uh, this evening, uh, at the 15th, when the mass mandate uh, certainly is no longer required or mandated, then uh, I do believe it's important for us to figure out what that magic number is uh, and, and how that does, in fact, uh, affect everyone. So that way, when we do look at this and we are getting information uh, uh, from the city attorney on uh, the results and where we are, I think it's very important for us to say, is that magic number 15%, 20%, 30% uh, of the county or of the state? Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Any other hands, Ms. Scanlon? No, Mayor, no other hands are raised. Okay, all right, so let's come back to the council. Uh, so for so me, I think that my preference would be that we just continue this to a date certain we meet remotely for our workshop if we have it on that Monday. Once that mandate is lifted on the 15th, you know, we can look at the numbers on the 14th if that's when we meet or whenever we do meet and make that decision now. I do think we have enough findings to continue the remote, which would make it more convenient for what is meeting, but that would not be why we would be finding it. And then my guess would be that the numbers are going to continue to come down and we would have that, you know, pattern to be able to point to and probably just yeah. come back in person. Multiple that would be my, that data. would be my, yeah, multiple, yeah. right. That would be my preference. Yeah, I concur. I could read your lips, Dan. You said you too, you, you agree. Okay. Yeah. Council member Lordson. I, I agree. Okay. All right. So, so I, I will agree to that, that we, that we will um, continue this through our workshop. And then we will, and we can take action then, right, Christine? We can take action on this and lift it at that day if we so choose so that on the February 22nd council me meeting, if we so choose as a council, we can come back in person. We can take action at the workshop, correct? Yes, it's actually, it would be that you would not be taking action. Not taking action, You would right. not be adopting the resolution continuing okay. the state of emergency. Which is okay. more appropriate for a workshop where we typically don't want to take well, action. That's why I was asking. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Okay. All right. And okay. we will we will simply re-agendize it with the same staff report and everything and just put it on the agenda for further. Wait, so discussion. I have a question. Okay, so here's, that, oh, I had does a that question. mean that we're meeting remotely on the 14th or in person on the 14th? That's remotely. my question. I'm confused now. Remotely. My, my understanding is that you are extending the emergency provisions through the Tonight. 15th. 
Perfect. to allow you to discuss it further on the 15th and either decide to take action or not. Yeah, but so my question is, if we're extending it tonight, if we want to end it on the 14th, that would be taking action. Correct. So the, the question Christine. is, can we do that yeah. then? Yes, yes, yeah. you can. Okay. There's, there is no, there is no hard and fast rule that says you can't take action at a workshop. It's just Perfect. been traditionally, we try to preserve it for something that's just a discussion Perfect. only item, but this, there's certainly no hard and fast rule that says if we notice it appropriately that you can't take action. So we're extending it tonight. We're giving it almost a week, looking at the numbers again, and we'll be taking it up again, then seeing where that, you know, trend line is, and we'll be able to make a determination, either no action or action based at that time. Correct. Okay. All right, I understand thanks. that that is the motion, and then we would need oh. a second to vote. Okay, hold on a second. I have a, I have a question. Um, so the the planning commission is on the sixteenth. If we meet on the fourteenth or even the fifteenth, because I don't I know we haven't set that date yet. Um, can do we have enough time to notice the planning commission as an in person meeting? Because if we if we lift it on before the sixteenth, then they have to meet in person. So we have to think how we want to notice that ahead of time, right? Couldn't we change the date for like the end of that week or whatever? Like whenever we take the motion, like based on whatever that our like first in-person would be at our first council. Oh, February 22nd. We Could can... we do that? Okay. I'm asking Christine, can yeah. we do that? Certainly. Okay. Okay. We would be able to say. There's enough flexibility that you could find, you know, I, I think there's enough flexibility that you could find. Yes, your not a, you're not willing to continue these, but you know, given that meetings have previously been noticed and that it's right. in the best interest of the city to allow the city's business to move forward, that canceling meetings right. uh, would not be in the best interest of the residents, um, that the handful of meetings that are still on schedule and have been noticed via Zoom could go forward. With. I think since it's the day after the governor's mask mandate ends and maybe one day or two days after we'd be making it, I think that that, and it would be an important where actual business it's, is happening. I think that we would be able to be allow that would be allowable versus way in advance, right? Sure. It's, like, it's so absolutely. Close. It's, I, I think it would be very defensible um, were someone to bring a Brown Act challenge, which I highly doubt, but I think given the timing and the circumstances, it would be highly defensible. I always like to prepare for the worst case scenario, but I yeah. agree. I think that being so close together that it makes sense in that form. Yep. So you have a motion. I'll go ahead and second. Oh, well, Dan was trying to say something a second ago. Dan, do you, did you want to say something or were you going to? I, I really had a question for Sean that he might not be able to answer. Um, we send the samples out twice a month. Yes, we get well. We get a report twice a month. The sampling is more continuous, I believe. Okay. Correct. So of, I believe is, some of the, the data is conducted. The sampling is conducted over several days and samples over, you know, like one an hour kind of thing. It's not yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. right. It's a scientific method that they use for the sampling. I don't think we send it out. I think we yes, do it there. No. no, correct. Okay. Correct. We, okay. No. We, we, have take a lot the here. we take the samples here. But, but Biobot is a different company that yeah. analyzes the samples. Yeah. It goes back east to, to uh, be analyzed, I thought. That's correct. I think you're right. I'm not sure where it is, but the samples are sourced here locally and then sent to wherever Biobot is. I think it's in Massachusetts. So, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and we need a second. We, second. we had a oh, second. Oh, we have to. Do we yeah. have to? Oh, we do. Sorry. Do, did we have to? I'm sorry. Just, I'm sorry. Do we have to adjust the wording like you said, Christine, or can we just? Because we're not doing it for another whole 30 days. We're just six, we're just not. Well, we might be. We're making that decision on the 14th. So tonight is the normal, okay. the normal resolution. I think okay. I think the motion is that you are extending the findings until okay. either the 14th or the 15th when that meeting gets scheduled and that we will have further discussion at that. Okay, time. great. All right. Roll call, please, Ms. Gammon. Yes. Council member Silhai. Yes. Council member Joyner. Yes. 
Council Member Carlskin? Yes. Council Member Lauritsen? Yes. And Mayor Andreata? Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you for that, everybody. All right, we are at number uh, item number 11, council initiated business. Do any of my colleagues have any council initiated business? Mayor Pro Tem Joiner? I do. Um, fasten your seatbelts, guys. Uh, Tom and Derry, the chamber CEO, and he may have approached a number of you as well, uh, has been contacted by uh, some investors who are uh, exploring the possibility of purchasing the Carnegie Library uh, to bring their business to town. This is going to be a huge conversation for our community to have to have, uh, but I think we're at a point where we're fairly, unfortunately, fairly easily able to project that we will not be able to reopen the Carnegie as a functioning part of the library system. Uh, so then the, then the conversation should be, what do we do with the building? Is it something that we want to, to uh, evaluate for sale? Uh, and do we want to entertain uh, any offers that might come along at this time? So I just wanted to throw it out there, see where the council is, and if we want to uh, agendize this for discussion somewhere along the way. Okay. Thank you. I'm okay with putting it on an agenda later. Yeah. Yeah. When it's all formed and there's something for us to talk about, I'm okay with that also. Well, but, you know, I, I would think that Christine should look into the legality yeah. of us selling it. Uh, it the Carnegie libraries were obviously a gift once upon a time. I think we've got one of the last, uh, we had one of the last functioning Carnegie libraries. So we've certainly seen them converted to uh, to museums and to other municipal uses, but uh, beyond that, what's possible? Uh, and so, and then, then obviously we need to get a valuation on that building uh, so, somewhere along the way as well. Council Member Joyner, I have looked into it from the limited perspective of whether the city is restricted on continuing its library purpose, and we are not. Um, now, I have not looked into the specific issue as to whether we are free to dispose of it if we please. But I know that in my previous jurisdiction, they raised it and put in a brand new library. So, Whoa. I mean, if you can mow it down to the ground, I would imagine Whoa. that you would be able to sell it. So that's something I can certainly look into. Um, I think if we're going to pursue this and we're interested in doing evaluation, all that, what I need to do is bring an agenda item forward to designate a real property negotiator so that we can talk about this in closed session. Um, so I will get that on an agenda if I sort of have five nods of the head so that we can at least talk about it when well, and if something is baked enough for us to talk about. Well, I, I'll say that I, I'm, I'm good with putting it on an agenda to explore. I mean, it doesn't do any good to say no to any idea. My, my hope for that building was, although we can't afford to operate as a library, I was hoping that the city could use it for some other great purpose, you know, for the city. So I'm not sure how I feel about selling it, but I'm okay with looking at it and listening to the proposal. I mean, that's always good to hear ideas. And, and, and so for me, um, I recognize that for certainly the older residents in our community, and by older, I mean longtime residents, this is going to be very personal. And this is a conversation that they need to be engaged in Yeah. Uh, from the very beginning. We can't be doing this without... Uh, a good solid okay uh, from the majority of the community. That building is just too precious to our history. I agree with that for sure. And I okay. think with that, we probably should move along. Okay. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, council member Carlos, can any uh, information items or council initiated business, excuse me. No. No. Okay. Sorry. I have my head down. I didn't see you nod your head. Yeah. Uh, council member Lauritsen. No. Okay. Councilmember Sohai? No initiated business, just an information item. Okay, so we'll jump to that. And then before we go, I'm going to give the floor to Sean for a few minutes, but I will um, let you guys go first. Um, since you're already there, Alyssa, go ahead and give us your information item. Who's going to report out again on that homelessness task force working group? The final draft was sent around to all of the cities. 
I continue to have some concerns with what's in there and made the request. It was supposed to be, hey, send me your comments. And then they're gonna just like, you know, put them all together with whatever they got and then send it out and it has everyone's city seals on it. And then I guess start doing meetings in person with each jurisdiction made me feel really uncomfortable. I asked that we continue to have at least one more meeting so that we can convene as a group. Looks like that's going to be scheduled for sometime later this month. Councilmember Joyner echoed that request, as did several other jurisdictions. Um, so I was, we were not alone in feeling a little bit um, of discomfort with just saying, okay, or here's my comments and do what you will with them. And so just for everyone's knowledge, we'll be meeting one more time. We'll be going over it. We'll see where that final product lands. And then I believe we'll start um, scheduling to have presentations at council meetings. Um, I suppose this could have been dovetailed with a council initiated business because what I would really, really, really like to see us do is I would really like to see us push out that this is going to be a discussion to the community um, because this discussion will have long-term ripple impacts on the community that they live in for, for forever, potentially. Um, and so I would really, 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 really like to get our public involved, um, knowing what the county's talking about, knowing what all the jurisdictions have talked about, knowing what other proposals are on the table, the pros, the cons. Um, and I hope that we can get that information out because I think that sometimes we don't do the best job at soliciting that type of feedback and engagement. And I think that this one is too important to mess up. So that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Lordson. No, 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 I don't. Okay. Councilmember Carlskin. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, just to notify people, we are having our uh, what has turned out to be quarterly uh, Koja Oversight Board meeting this yeah, on the fifteenth, I think, and uh, hopefully the agenda will show that they have come to some uh, agreements and that we can take a massive step forward. But it's and it's so infrequently that I can say something is happening on a code job. I thought I'd say it's going to happen, I think. It's going to happen, you think? You think, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate that update. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Joiner, any any uh, information item? I, I just want to uh, piggyback on on Alyssa's comments about the the homeless uh, task force. Mm -hmm. um, my own personal preference, for those of you who don't know, there this has been divided into a steering committee, into uh, and I forget the title of it. Christine might remember, but there's another working group, and then there's the policymakers, and we have never ever met together. We, we've got staff playing telephone and telling us what each of the groups said and prioritized. Um, and, and my comfort uh, would be greatly increased if we had one meeting, at least one meeting, with everybody in the room. And I'd prefer that it be live so that we can have an actual discussion. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're talking about another one hour long Zoom call um, that will be moderated and controlled uh, and and ultimately do exactly what they wanted, which is to give each of us to give our comments and then have it thrown into this report to come back to us at a later date. Yeah. That's, that is a concern. So I appreciate that update. And I appreciate the two of you keeping us uh, informed on what happens in those meetings. And, and I would add this too. I've talked to people that are in that other working group, law enforcement types. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really uncomfortable with all of this as well. They've mm -hmm. been they've been scripted and asked to come in and make scripted presentations. They've refused mm -hmm. to do so. Um, so so it's, this is all a little. Um, well, I know that. Um, so on the. I'm on uh, the board of a nonprofit here in Placer County, and they were approached to try to endorse, you know, what's the project going forward. And I was able to speak to it and give some, you know, information that they appreciated. And uh, we have a new board member who's also um, Placer County Sheriff, and he also expressed some concern. So 
that you know uh you guys aren't the only ones it's it's all around so that's just yeah. to piggyback on this information item i'll take a moment to brag on our own staff our city attorney and our yeah. chief both refused to give any sort of scripted feedback and are very much um being really great representatives for the city in providing Good. their professional input while also leaving policy matters up to the policy makers so um, shout out to them both for doing a really good job. That's Thank good. you. That's good. Thank you, Council. And Mayor Andrade, if I just may real briefly on this subject, um, I just, in case there's any public that's listening, I want to clarify that the committee or commission that Council is talking about at this point is a county regional homeless um, board that's been convened of representatives from all the various agencies um, in South Placer. This is not um, I get a lot of questions and comments from the public about homelessness in Lincoln specifically. And as you know, I chair the homeless task, the Lincoln City Homeless Task Force. And so we um, obviously take very different approach to responding to issues of homelessness in our community. And it's much more of a boots on the ground um, type approach doing our creek walks and cleanups and participating in the point in time count and doing a number of projects like that. So just in case anyone is listening who has communicated with me about what's going on with homeless, the homelessness issue in Lincoln, it's, it's very different than what's being discussed right now. Thank you. I appreciate that uh, clarification. Okay. So um, I don't really, I have a little bit of information. It's nothing big. Um, as you all know that uh, the rodeo grounds are working out there, they're updating and they're pouring concrete and they're, they're, um, you know, trying to um, do some good things out there. And I got a call from the, the head of the rodeo grounds out there invited me to come out this weekend. He wants to show, you know, show what they're doing and uh, just kind of looking for some support from the city just to kind of get some stuff done. So once I go and talk and look out there and find out what, what it is that, you know, they're wanting from us, I can bring that back next time. But um, I love the rodeo. I always like to go out there. So it'll be kind of fun to, to go out there and see what they're, what they're doing. Um, so that'll be fun. I'm going to do that on Saturday. So so um, Mayor, those, those conversations had already begun. Um, yes, I know that. Probably been yeah. three, four months ago now that, yes. that Mark and I sat down and, yes. and he met with, with those folks. So yeah, he told me that. Yeah, Randy told me that. Um, and so I'm I'm just gonna go and just check it out. And I know you're already, you know, kind of up to date on that, but I'm looking forward to it. And so um I I I just told him that I don't know what the particular asks will be so I'm not speaking to that but just as general support from the council because we all value the rodeo and love it out there and so I can imagine that we'll be as supportive as we possibly can to help them accomplish what they want to do out there so um so that's all I have for that and then I just I texted Sean and I said hey I saw somewhere on an agenda that you were going to give us a little bit of updates on a few things and then it wasn't there I said maybe I I'm crazy or whatever and he said no we just decided not to put on it because the agenda was kind of already formed but I did want to officially welcome him I mean it's a bummer that we're on zoom but at least people watching can see your face and they see who you are um and uh, next next meeting will will be in person and hopefully and and people can actually meet you um whoever shows up but I wanted to give Sean a few minutes just to to say a few things and then if there are a couple little items that he wants to update us on that we need that would be great but I just want to give Sean a few minutes to to say a few words so Sean go ahead Sure. Thanks. <clears throat> thanks, Mayor and, and um, Council. I'm obviously super happy to be here. It's been, uh, let's see, this is day seven. And um, I think I must have had 30 meetings the first week and I'm tracking the same this week. So really doing my best to try to get up to speed as fast as possible. So nothing, um, nothing slows down on the many projects we're working on. Um, for members of the public that might be watching, if um, you're interested in getting in touch with me, I'd love to meet you. And um, whether you want to meet in person or talk on the phone or Zoom, um, call City Hall, come down here. My email is sean.scully uh, at lincolnca.gov. Um, send me emails. I'm trying my best to get out and meet as many of our community members as, as is reasonable and feasible. Um, just three really quick little updates about the ARPA workshop next week. Um, some of the feedback that I've received early on from individual council members is that um, what, and, and it's my preference too, is that the, the format maybe that we have 
um, become comfortable with in a workshop where you maybe get a fully baked um, uh, concept um, on whatever item you're you're considering. Um, I think that uh, government works may be just slightly better in situations, especially like ARPA, where there's widespread possibilities and consequences of possibilities and opportunities <laughs> to <clears throat> bring it to you in a much more simple form where here is what we know. And now you, the policymakers, tell us the parameters by which you'd like us to do the staff work to create the programs. So in other words, we're not going to bring you the cake already baked. You tell us what ingredients and flavors you want, and then we go do that. So that's sort of what you're not going to see a fully expansive staff report with a ton of analysis. That's not the concept. It's brainstorming. And anyway, just wanted to lay the groundwork for that. Um, second is um, uh, we are in the middle of um, reviewing an internal um, build of the new website that Jen Brown and her team have put together um, that have they built it internally, which is actually very rare. Um, usually um, most cities use a, you know, three or four of these companies that kind of give you a uh, template, um, but um, I've actually seen it. Uh, it's really neat. Um, we're going to circulate it around as an internal draft, get some comments on it before we're ready to go live. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and um, finally, um, I've been working with uh, Sandra Cook in finance a little bit about um, we are going to be reinstituting water shutoffs, um, not immediately, but probably in the um, we'll have a specific date here soon, but it'll be in the eight, late April, early May timeframe. So for those of you that um, in, in the public that are in the arrears on, on your accounts, it gives plenty of time for you to come in and get up to up to date. If you need to work out a payment arrangement, you know, whatever, um, there's, there's a variety of grant programs as well that Sandra has been working on to help provide a little support to some folks that maybe are going to have a tough time, um, getting back up. So, um, so anyway, we're here to work with you and, and we want to be as flexible as we can, but we do want to also get our accounts in order so that we can get back to some sense of normalcy now that the, the, moratorium on shutoffs has, has expired um, at the end of the last year. So those are the three quick updates I have. And um, I didn't speak a whole lot tonight, but that's good because you're going to hear a lot of my voice in coming <laughs> meetings. So, um, you know, enjoy it while you can. And thanks right. very much for having me. Yeah. Can I just add on to that real quick, just so that the public is also aware that reinstituting any shutoff just means that we have to go back to what the law already was, which gives a lot of time for notice. Um, and a, a whole process. So it's not like the next day or anything like it was before that law went into effect a few years ago. So I um, right. just wanted to not have anyone freak out. No, correct, Thank Mayor. You. And or, I'm sorry, not no longer the mayor, but council members. <laughs> we also are under new requirements to offer payment plans. And we have a number of other obligations that are imposed upon us to, to really work with the residents to, yeah. to, to get them back and current. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, nobody nobody wants anybody's water to be shut off, but we have to follow the law best we can. So thank you guys for that. So um, I just want to say before we adjourn that, um, and I know Sean is a humble man, and um, you know, and he's probably squirming in his seat right now. But I, I'm sure you guys have noticed. But he's been here a week, and already I have gotten more things answered and him being on top of things. Um, I, I am, I can't tell you how happy I am. I'm so happy. I mean, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road. Like we always have stuff going on and uh, he's still getting up to speed on a lot of things, but I have to say, congratulations council. We made a very good choice and I could not be happier. And I hope you feel the same way. So I just want to thank Sean for uh, the first week of like amazing stuff and I'm thrilled. So and you chose a heck of a link to come in. So uh, I hope right. you're happy you're here. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Good. And his wife is amazing. So I can't wait for them to get moved here. All right. Unless there's anything else, it is, what is it? 707 or eight. I, uh, uh, we adjourn. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, staff.